So I'll be talking about uh, uh, EF games or Aaron Fritz. Uh, I, I will. I not very sure how that's pronounced, but it's uh, probably Aaron Fox. Say games. Yeah, games are a very useful technique uh, in first order logic and uh, <clears throat> they can be used to understand the expressive power of, you know, well, any logic. We need to define an appropriate game and uh, they, can be help they can be useful to us to understand the expressive power of these logics. Uh, so before that, I'd like to introduce uh, the notion of, uh, so Sir is all, uh, Professor Pratik already covered the syntax of first order logic. In, the, in, in, in connection with this syntax, I would like to introduce the notion of what is called the quantifier rank of a formula or the nesting depth or the quantifier depth of a formula. These are all equivalent uh, notions. So for any formula that you have from the syntax itself, you can see that you can write down the formula as a tree. Okay. So for example, if you have a formula say exists x, <coughs> uh, let's say the vocabulary is say uh, r. Just it's a binary predicate. Okay, so we say let's say there exists x r of x x and for all y r of x y or um, negation r y y. I hope this is visible at the back. Okay, so yeah, so suppose suppose you have a formula of this kind, then you can just write it down as a tree as you know. There exists x, and you have an and here, so you just write down that, and that has two arguments, which is r of xx, and there's the other argument, which can itself be again recursively written down as a tree, which is for all y, and then that's an or, and then that's say r of xy, and then there is a negation, and then there is r of yy. <coughs> So every formula, so this is just an example, but you can see that any, any first order formula can be written down as a tree, which is called the parse tree of the formula. Now, uh, the, so, uh, so, uh, f so uh, all for, uh, no, we just look at each path from the root to the leaf and we find out the number of quantifiers that are appearing along that path, okay? And the maximum number of quantifiers that, along, that, that appear along any path from the root to the leaf is what is called the quantifier depth of the formula or the nesting depth of the formula or the quantifier rank of the formula. So for example here, this path has uh, just one quantifier whereas this path has two and that part is, path is two so the maximum of all of these is two. So therefore the quantifier depth or the quantifier rank of this formula is two. Yeah, so this is just a, uh, but you know this notion will be useful later on. I shall introduce this, uh, the, the notion of the EF game between two structures and show how uh, a game of n moves has a very close connection to formula of quantifier rank n. Okay. So, so the, the EF game is a game that is played between two structures. Okay. So let us say, let us for uh, convenience, let us uh, just restrict ourselves to structures which are graphs. Okay. Let us say in particular colored graphs to make, uh, to explain to, for the ease of exposition. So let us say, our, so our vocabulary here would be R, which is a binary predicate, which is of parity 2 and uh, let, and say, P, which is a unary predicate, which is a parity one. So any structure, as uh, you know, any any first order structure has a universe of elements, and then it has an interpretation to each of these predicates. The structure can be interpreted as you know all the elements of the structure can be interpreted as nodes, and the R relation will be specifying directed edges across between these vertices, and P will be like coloring every node with one of two colors. Okay, so uh, yeah. So so uh, the structures of the the sigma structures here are all colored graphs, and now the game, the EF game, is is played between two graphs. Okay, two colored graphs. So you have a graph G1 and you have a graph G2, <coughs> and the game is played between these two structures. So the game consists of two players. One is called a spoiler, and the other is called a duplicator. Uh, I think there are different names. Uh, for the spoiler and the duplicator, I think it can be called um, Sujan Singh and Dujan Singh, or, 
or uh, or something or, or uh, something else sam and whatever so there are different different uh, there are some you know different names given to this but yeah we shall just refer to them as spoiler and duplicator so uh, uh, the game is played in uh, you know uh, the the game is played in rounds so in any round uh, the spoiler picks up any one of these structures okay any one of these graphs and picks up a node from that graph in response so in response in the same round the duplicator picks up the other structure and he picks up some node of uh, or the uh, picks up the other graph and he picks up a node of the other graph but uh, trying to ensure that this newly picked up node bears the same kind of relationships relationship to the previously selected nodes as the one that the spoiler took okay so 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 to give an example so let us say you have a graph which is that okay uh, and this is say colored so uh, you know if p of x is true then that's you can say that's one color if p of x is false then it's a different color let us say if p of x is true then it is blue and if uh, if p of x is false then it is green so p of x equal to true is blue and uh, is equal to false is say green so let us say you have this blue green and green and you have another graph which is let us say <coughs> green and uh blue and okay so so the in the in the in the first round of the game the spoiler picks up one of these structures let's say he picks up this one and let's say he picks up this particular node then the duplicator picks up the other structure and he's he he will respond with a node from the structure but this response will try to ensure that the node that is picked up first of all has the same color as the node that the spoiler picked up okay and since this is the first round of the game there is there has been no previously picked up nodes so all that he needs to ensure in this first round is that the color of the picked up node is the same as the color of this so he can just pick up any one of these nodes okay let's say he picks up this now in the second round so uh, so uh, you know now suppose uh, so it's possible that of course in this particular example of course it is it is the case that for the move that the spoiler has made the duplicator has been able to make a move which is indeed uh, you know, satisfies the fact that you know it it is of it is of green color and that matches the color of the node the node that is picked up if it was a structure like this where it was all blue then the duplicator has no response yeah so the duplicator has in in this in this particular case the duplicator will not be able to respond with a node which satisfies the constraint that you know it's of the same color if the duplicator is able to respond in the manner that i just specified then the duplicator is said to have won this round of the game and the spoiler has lost this round of the game and the duplicator is not able to respond in this manner then the duplicator loses in this round of the game and the spoiler wins in that round of the round of the game so it's a zero one thing so either the duplicator wins or the spoiler wins in any round of the game okay now let's get back uh, to this thing so let's say it was uh, green and this was green as well so in this round the, of course the spoiler has lost and the duplicator has won by making this choice okay this the game then proceeds to the next round and it starts afresh again this this the spoiler has the freedom to choose any one of these structures and he picks up a node from 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 the structure so let us say he picks up this node okay this is say this is uh, this is so let's say this is g2 so this is um, this is b1 and that's a1 and now the spoiler in the second round picks up the node called a2 okay and now the duplicator is supposed to choose the other structure and he is he would like to choose and he is supposed to choose a node which of course has the same color as this selected node but not just that it also he must also pick up the node in such a manner that it has bears the same kind of relationship to the previously selected nodes as this guy does has okay so of course uh, the duplicator has no choice here he has to pick up this node he cannot pick up this one although this is a green node he could have picked up this green node okay but if he had picked up this one uh the constraint so apart from the fact that you know there is an edge between these two nodes okay 
and there is no edge of course. Just to make, just okay. Oh, yeah, I think this hall is under construction. So, yeah. So, uh, of course, you know, uh, the 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 choice of the node is such that of course it respects the color thing, but it also respects the fact it also respects the equalities between uh, between these vertices. So, for example, so for example, spoiler could have picked up this node in the second structure in in the second round. He could have picked up this node. Okay, in which case the duplicate is supposed to pick up the same node. Okay, so the constraints are that the ch in any round, the, sp the you know whatever node the spoiler picks up, the duplicate chooses a node from the other structure, which bears the same relationships to the previously selected nodes, which therefore includes equality relations as well. Okay, so in particular, if he has chosen two different nodes, the duplicate must choose a different node. If he has chosen the same node, the duplicate must choose the same node. Okay. So therefore, he cannot choose this node, and let us say, and he cannot choose this duplicate. Cannot choose this because it's of a different color, and therefore he can choose only this. So the color requirements have matched, but there's a problem now. Eight and let's say so this is B two. Now A two has a forward edge to A one, whereas B one or B two has a backward edge from B one. So this is really not the same relation as ones that are there here. So we can see that the duplicator, whatever choice he makes, he he is not able to make the choice satisfy the same relationships that are there here. In here, so the duplicator has no move. You know, there is no there is no uh, choice of the for the duplicator. There is no move for the duplicator by which he is able to win this round. So the duplicator actually loses this second round. Okay. Likewise, we can uh, we can take an example of a larger graph. You know where the duplicator can continue beyond two steps and so on. So, so therefore, uh, you know, if I were to define this, so in every round there is a the spoiler either wins or the duplicator wins, okay. Uh, and then the game is played for you know n rounds. If at any point in time the spoiler has won the round, then the game stops. The game is the game is ended, and the spoiler is said to have won the game. Okay, if it is a game of n moves. And at any point in time, at any particular round, the spoiler has won that particular round, and the spoiler has won the whole game. Okay, but if the duplicate has won that round, he has only won that round. Okay, for him to win the game, he needs to ensure his success in all the rounds of the game. Okay. So, the duplicate wins the game. Okay, so the duplicate wins the game if, uh, if and only if. Uh, he is able to ensure his success in all rounds. Okay, if and only if that means if and only if at the end of n rounds, he has won. So uh, you know, so that's the notion of uh, you know a game between two structures and the notion of uh, the duplicator winning a game between two structures. Now the duplicator is, if the duplicator is able to ensure his success in n rounds, regardless of the moves of the spoiler. Okay. Then the duplicate is said to have a winning strategy in this game. So, um, uh, yeah, um, like say, for, uh, so we look at we look at an example of two structures. Of course, we have, I have given an example of two structures, which in which uh, the duplicate does not have a winning strategy, in the two round game between these two structures, because there is a game, there is a choice of moves for the spoiler for which the duplicate has no answer for the for which the duplicate loses. Okay, so here is a game in which. The spoiler has the duplicator has no winning strategy, and the absence of the winning strategy for the duplicator means that means a winning strategy for the spoiler. So the spoiler has a winning strategy in this game. Okay, but let's look at an, at an example of you know. Uh, but whereas in the one round game, in the one round game the spoiler the duplicator has a winning strategy. You know, you just you just need to ensure the uh, the, the colors match. So if he selects if the spoiler selects green here, he selects green, he selects blue here, he selects blue, and vice versa. Okay. Um, the fact the 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 notation for i mean uh, if if the duplicator is an, able to have a winning strategy in the end round game between these two structures then it is denoted as g1 n g2 okay that is saying that uh, yeah, this duplicator has a winning strategy and you can see that um, uh, yeah uh, this also means that uh, these two structures are partially isomorphic. Okay, these two structures are so in, you know in 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 
at the end of any two round, at the end of any number of rounds, the duplicator has to ensure that the structure that is there in you know the the this, the set of nodes that have been selected in any one graph is isomorphic to the set of nodes that are selected to uh, is isomorphic to the structure that is generated in the other graph. So therefore, you know, the G1 and G2 represents the fact that these two are partially isomorphic. Uh, let me take another example of uh, two structures which are. Uh, so let us say I have two. Um, let's say I have two linear orders. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, so I have two finite linear orders, okay, and we can see, uh, I'll try to give a hint or give an intuition of uh, how by ensuring that these two linear orders are, are of sufficiently large size, you can ensure that there is a, you know, these two are, you can, the duplicator has a winning strategy in, in an end round game between the two, okay. So, um, so the strategy would be uh, for the duplicator. Um, of course, if the spoiler selects an endpoint, okay. So this is a linear order. So these elements are ordered in this in this in this fashion. If the spoiler selects uh, an endpoint, uh, of course, in the one round game, the duplicator can select anything. But in a two round game, uh, that will be a problem because suppose, for example, the spoiler chose this endpoint, and the duplicator chose something else which is not the endpoint. Okay, let's let's say some other node here. Then the spoiler in the second round will choose just the previous node, and then the duplicator will be supposed to respond with a node which is just before the node that was selected here. But then there is no one, there is no such. Okay, so it is it is only uh, mandatory that in a two-round game, if the duplicator has to win, then he better select this node. Likewise, you can argue for the the other endpoint. Okay, uh, here is one strategy for. Uh, the duplicator in that this uh, if it is an end round game huh? yeah. I, yeah. I don't want to duplicate yeah. so okay so uh, the strategy would be uh, so if, it, if it's an end round game then uh, here is one strategy where the uh, the dupli so this initial segment of size n, uh, the duplicator will try to uh, make his moves in such a way that if the spoiler chooses from this initial segment, the duplicator will also choose from that you know because two initial segments are isomorphic, the two initial segments look the same of size n. Then uh, whatever choice the spoiler makes in any one of these, the duplicator can respond with the corresponding choice in the other structure. Okay, likewise here. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, so this would be a strategy for the duplicator. If the spoiler picks up from the initial n seg initial segment, uh, uh, the n segment of uh, the first structure, then he also chooses from the initial segment of the other structure, which is the, the corresponding segment. If it is anything in between, okay. Then uh, he also chooses something in between. Okay. If it now, if it is a, if this game goes for more than one round, uh, so this, this is following the strategy. If the if, the, if this if at the beginning the first round the duplicator chooses the spoiler chooses from this initial n segment, then the duplicator chooses from the, the corresponding node in the other n segment. If he chooses from here, he chooses from here. If he chooses anything in between, the duplicator also chooses anything in between. Okay. <coughs> now we want to somehow use this argument recursively to ensure the winning strategy for and and note that this kind of this strategy for the duplicator ensures his, ensures his success in the one round game between the two structures. Okay. So we want to recursively use this argument to get a strategy for the end round game. Okay. <coughs> so the idea would be given this choice, let us say this is the second round. Given this choice and some choice here, this strategy would be to do that again. That means, uh, so well, this could be a large one. So let me say that it's something here. So that's an initial end segment, and there's something here, and there's something there. 
the strategy would be to try and replicate this given uh, by considering this as an initial as, as a segment and this as a segment okay so the same argument that was used here the same the strategy that was used here will be replicated in the in, in this reduced uh, path that is there between these two structures or this reduced linear order okay so here again if he chooses from this first initial n segment he chooses from here if he chooses this initial from this initial from this n segment here then the idea would be to choose from this n segment and these two are of course isomorphic and if there is anything in between the duplicator would want to choose from anything in between okay <coughs> now this is a reduced structure and this is also reduced structure and it's the same strategy again so if this is if he chooses from this n segment then this guy will choose from this n segment else he chooses anything in between okay so you can see that uh, and likewise we ensure it on the other side also that means um, so this was our first thing this is a1 and say this is b1 and this is a2 and that's b2 and let's say that's a3 we know that this kind of strategy is going to ensure success just that we need it to be long enough so that you know so so that these things don't overlap it's a sufficient condition of course so if these things do not overlap uh you know so if we can ensure this on the other side also so uh so far we can see that uh uh you know the size of the structure required here is uh so this is n and that's n and this uh uh yeah so so it's like this so this whole structure you start in the middle so you say that's the left segment and the right segment the left segment itself you want to ensure it to be long enough so that has two other segments and then this segment uh, so this is this is a1 and that's uh, let us say a2 and then that's a3 <coughs> we would want the length of a2 to be uh, uh, let us say if if we go one step further so this again a3 here then you know we would want it to be you know n again then there's an a4 here so it's uh, so that's a4 okay so we would want a3 i mean this particular length to be say 2n greater than 2n and likewise you know if we were to repeat the same argument everywhere this would we would want it to be greater than 2n that would want to be greater than 2n this will ensure a strategy for this duplicator and therefore if these two uh, must be greater than 2n <coughs> then this is greater than 4n this is greater than 4n that's greater than 8n okay in general if you keep going down if it is a tree of height uh, say h so you know whatever uh, and so on so height h this is the previous one will require 2n size and all that all the ones at that same level require you know size of 2n then the one above that will require size of 4n and so on so if it is of height h say the h minus 1th level it's 2 to the power 1 and the h minus 2th level is 2 to the power 2 up here it will be 4 plus 4 which is 8 which is h minus 3 will be 2 to the power 3 and up there and so on so that at h minus uh, h which is 0 it will be 2 to the power 2 to the power well it's 2 to the power uh, it's 2n 2n yeah i think yeah it's 2 to the power n i think is that right so it's 2n um, up there it is going to be 4n which is yeah i think that's fine that's fine <coughs> so in so that means if we can ensure this path to be at least as large as 2n 2 uh, to the power n both of these paths to be at least as large as 2 to the power n then you can get a winning strategy for the duplicator by doing the following uh you know if it is this initial segment then it's an initial segment here and vice versa and vice versa there if it is uh if it is something in the middle if it is something in the middle then if it is 
sufficiently far away from here. That is, it is, a, it is at a distance of 2 to the power h minus 1 from here. Okay. Uh, I mean, no, that's 2 to the power h minus 1 and 2 to the power h minus 1 from there. Then, you know, you leave out the same kind of segment here and you can choose any node here. And you just repeat, recursively repeat this argument. Okay. So, well, I don't know whether that was rigorous enough, but I've, I hope I've tried to convey an intuition of why it is the case that if these two linear orders were large enough, then there, should, there would be a winning strategy between the two structures. Um, another example that I can give is that of, uh, let us say you have uh, one cycle, okay, and you have two cycles. Okay, so the claim is that if these two, if this cycle, and so this is, let's say this is G1, and this is G1 and G1 again, but this whole structure is G2. G2 is two copies of G1 put together. Okay, the claim is that if G1 is large enough as compared to N, then the again the duplicator will have a winning strategy between these two, and uh, that is I think. Can be seen again uh, as the predicate here is just uh, R or E. Just it's just the just the binary predicate here. So it's a so it's a cycle. So so the only predicate is edge the edge predicate. And there are no unary predicates. So let's say it's yeah, whatever it's undirected. It doesn't matter. So I think. Uh, uh, the fact is that the fact is, so let us say if this if the cycle is of size two, greater than say two to the power n, and you know these two are again greater than two to the power n, two to the power n. Then um, the the fact is that in n moves, this structure cannot be grasped in its entirety. In n moves, you can see only a part of the structure. So and that part you can always find it here also. So for example, any part here. At the end of n moves, this the, the 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 n nodes that are selected from here will form a collection of disjointed paths or points, right? So it is never the case that this whole structure can be grasped. It is only the case that in n moves you will only see some kind of collections of paths and you know disjoint collections of paths and points. And since these two are large enough, you can always replicate this particular you can you can always replicate this choice here. Okay. So. But that's only uh, no. But that's only if these two graphs are large enough. So, for example, if this, if they, if, they, if they were small, say it's 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 let's say it's n is um, uh, or let's say it's just a three-sized graph, and these two are three-sized graphs, then in let's in say four moves, the difference between these two will be detect, will be detected, okay? Because the spoiler will choose all the mo all the uh, elements from here, uh, for which the duplicator will have to exhaust all the elements here, and then he'll spoiler will choose one more element here, and then there's a problem. Right. So, yeah. So I think this. So uh, very roughly, I can tell you. That, you know, you can see that uh, with this large enough size, you can ensure a winning strategy for the duplicator in this in the end round game between the two structures. Now, this example will be useful uh, when I tell you the following theorem. Uh, the EF theorem, coming back to uh, EF games thing. Uh, so the EF theorem says that um, um, the following are equivalent. One, um, you know, okay. The EF theorem says that given structures, or let us say, for example, for for our since yeah, let's say graphs, given graphs A and B. Um, the following are equivalent a um, and b and the fact that a and b satisfy exactly the same set of uh, sentences Of uh, quantifier rank less than equal to n. Okay. So 
it, it says that uh, if these two structures are such that the duplicator has a winning strategy in the end round game between the two structures, then no formula of quantifier rank n can distinguish these two structures. Okay, so um, and and therefore it says that uh, and therefore it says that if it is the case that a and b uh, do not satisfy exactly the same set of centers of quantifier rank less than or equal to n, that means there is a distinguishing formula, then there, then the spoiler has a winning strategy in this game. Okay. And now we can see, so you know, and immediate, uh, and, you know, and immediately, uh, you know, you can see this immediately by seeing by by the examples that we just considered. Like, say, for example, the first thing that we looked at was, you know, um, or, or, or let's say let's, let's take let's take this itself. If this is, if this was of size three, and these two are of size three again, and I'm looking at the four round game, okay, I can express this whole structure as uh, there exists x1, x2, x3, such that um, x1 not equal to x2 and uh, x3 not equal to x2 not equal to x3 and x1 not equal to x3. And uh, this says that there are at least three elements and I'll say that for all y, uh, y is one of the xi's, which means that every y is one of these. That means this sh the, the two put together say that there is exactly three elements in the structure. And then you just encode the relation. So we'll just say that E of x1, x2 and uh, negation of E x2, x1 and whatever. And E x2, x3 dot dot dot. E x2, x3 and negation E x3, x2 and so on. Okay. So this formula you can see uh, is such that this structure will satisfy this formula. And any structure which satisfies this formula will have exactly three nodes which are connected in this fashion. In other words, this graph of size 3 with the cycle of size 3 is the only model of this formula up to isomorphism. Okay. But, uh, and this is of quantifier rank, uh, in fact this is of just quantifier rank 2. You can see, the, oh, so quantifier rank 4, sorry. Quantifier rank 4. And you can clearly see that, so, as I just said, the only model of this formula is this graph. Therefore, this graph is not a model of this formula. Five minutes left. So therefore, this graph is not a model of this formula, and that's a distinguishing thing. <coughs> right. So, uh, yeah. <coughs> so indeed, it's the case that if A and B do not satisfy the same set of sentences of quantifier rank less than then there is a distinguishing. There is a, there is a game for the, there is a uh, strategy for the spoiler. Now, <coughs> This theorem, uh, of course, I'll not go into the proof of this, but I shall show that uh, show some applications of this theorem in uh, uh, in understanding the expressive power of first-order logic. Okay, so this is of course for first-order logic. So this is all for given graphs A and B, and uh, so this is all for FO. Okay, yeah, I think I have enough time to just cover um, uh, an, an inexpressibility proof. Okay. Uh, I think I just rubbed that out. Let me just bring that back. Okay, I have one graph which is G1, and I have two copies of the same graph that form G2. <coughs> now I want to say that uh, the following property is not expressible in first-order logic. The property that uh, the property which is the collection of only cycles. Okay, the property can be seen as a set of structures. And I'm claiming that this that set of structures, which is exactly the set of all cycles, is inexpressible in first order logic. Okay. Um, so the property P is um, cycles. Um, graphs which are cycles. Okay. This is inexpressible in first order logic. Okay. Uh, now, to show this, we shall use this theorem, okay, and, um, you know, yeah, so the idea would be the following, um, hmm. um, if you take, um, suppose this was indeed expressible in first order logic, okay. 
then it would have a certain quantifier rank. Suppose this was indeed expressible in first order logic, then it would have a certain quantifier rank. Okay. Now, if I can come up with two structures A and B such that uh, they are n equivalent, that means there's a winning strategy for the duplicator, the end round game, okay, then it would imply that of course, you know, A and B ag agree on all sentences of quantifier rank less than or equal to n and in particular on that formula which expresses this, this thing. So suppose this was, suppose uh, P was expressible by a FO formula, FO sentence, say phi, okay. Now, uh, so therefore, you know, if I have two structures which are n equivalent, then they will agree on all sentences of quantifier rank less than or equal to n and in particular on phi, okay. Now the idea would be to try and get a B such that B is outside P. Okay, so if I can get an if I can get an A and a B such that A is inside P and B is not inside P, but sentence P of rank n. Okay, so if I can get two structures A and B such that one is inside P and the other is not inside P, but A and B are n equivalent, then we'll have a contradiction. That is because this will imply that this is true, and this is true will imply that uh, this will imply that A uh, satisfies phi if and only if uh, B satisfies phi. But since A is in P, and I'm saying that P is expressible by phi, so that would mean that A satisfies phi is true, and that would imply that B satisfies phi is true which would imply because phi express phi captures p it would imply that b satisfies b belongs to p but then that's a contradiction okay so now since i do not know you know if p was indeed expressible by a first order sentence since i do not know what rank it could be if i can ensure that i can get this a and b for for each n okay then it is definitely the case that this, this p cannot be expressed by a first order sentence because if it is expressible by a first order sentence by very definition it must have a you know a sentence by definition is a finite length string and therefore it will have a finite quantifier rank and therefore for each and if I have been able to ensure this thing I know that phi can't be first order expressible okay so that will be the so that's how this theorem helps us in getting a way of showing inexpressibility proofs in first order logic so now uh, to show that this property is not expressible in first order logic, I just need to do this. Okay, so the the idea would be the following: uh, I will just take um, mm, yeah, exactly. As I said earlier, we had uh, seen that if these two were sufficiently large, then we could have a winning strategy for the spoiler for the duplicator. So in particular, I specified that if this is of size greater than two to the power n. And therefore, this is of size whatever greater than four to the power n. Then you know these two are these two will be n equivalent. So the idea would be for 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 each n, given n, choose uh, a to be uh, the cycle of of length uh, two to the power n, and b to be two copies of a. To disjoint, well, uh, B to B, um, B to B, well, B to B, A disjoint unit A. Disjoint unit A. Okay. <coughs> As argued earlier, from earlier argument, from earlier, A is n equivalent to B. But now this is very clear. This A is in P, whereas B, although it's, it has two cycles, it itself is not a cycle. Therefore, it is not in P. So therefore, this is true. And and that shows it. I mean, that shows that phi cannot be of quantifier rank. This phi, if it all it existed, cannot be of quantifier rank n. But then, I have, since I've done it for every n, I'm done. Right. So likewise, I five. Um, what I can do? Um, yeah. Likewise, it is also the case that. Uh, 
the following property of reachability is inexpressible in first order logic. So P is um, in fact, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, in fact, P is the set of all all connected graphs. This is also not expressible in first order logic. And again, the idea would be to choose, you know, the idea would be to come up with this kind of thing. And I think the same example would work. Okay? That is, given n, I would choose a to be this one, which is a connected graph, and b to be this one, which is not a connected graph. Okay? I know that a n equal b from my argument. I know that this belongs to p because my, well, this is p1, so I choose a to be whatever, yeah. So if I choose, so I know that this a will belong to p and b will not belong to p and therefore I'm done. Okay, so this property is also not expressible in first order logic. And uh, um, so in other words, so and, uh, and therefore I think the property of q which is um, given uh, um, given a graph, oh well, the property which is G A B, which is where uh, where A and B are connected in G, this property, this set, is also f uh, first order inexpressible. <coughs> in other words, so we can reason out from here only, and uh, this essentially means that. Reachability is not expressible in first order logic. Okay, the f the checking of given given two nodes A and B whether there's a first order sentence which will exactly capture this set. This is not uh, this is not first order definable, and that motivates. Um, but you know, reachability is one of the most easiest things to check algorithmically. If it's a, if, a, if you have a finite graph, is one of the most easiest things to check using a breadth first search or a depth first search. So, whereas first order logic is unable to express even that. So there are that will motivate extensions of first order logic by additional operators, which indeed enrich the logic to be able to express such properties. Those are you know ad, you know uh, extending first order logic with fixed point operators and so on. I think that is something which uh, Professor Fokian will cover. So yeah, I think I am at the end of this thing. So just to wrap up, yeah, uh, the idea of uh, the the whole presentation was to introduce you to the notion of EF games. And uh, uh, to give you an, give you examples of how you can play games between two structures, which will ensure winning strategies for the duplicator, and how the winning strategy for a duplicator has a very close connection to logic, which is uh, you know satisfaction of uh, how has has a close connection to the quantifier rank of uh, sentences, and how it is the case that this theorem is uh, enables us to get uh, some inexpressibility proofs in first order logic. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think with that. With that.